Hello, I'm Malcolm Housley. I'm Janice Baker. We all know a little about bees, don't we, honey? I, I've told you not to call me honey on TV. Oh, hopeless. <clears throat> We're going to meet the Bush Bee Man. Well, you could call me, but I prefer an email, I think. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> Next on Our Time. Oh, yeah. What else could you have called me? <laughs> I could have called you lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're about to list off a whole thing about bees, honey. Mmm. Honey, jam. <laughs> no. <laughs> about... Look, we need professional help <laughs> we from do. the bee bush man, Mark DeCoe. Mark, <laughs> welcome to our time. Oh, thanks for having me on. It's good. Hysterical humour. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's well, a dad joke. It'd fit right into my show. We're trying anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Well, now that's what you're here to talk about because you've taken the, the uh, queen bee by the feelers. Yes. Is that what you call them? Bull by the horns. Queen yeah. bee by the feelers. Yeah. And you've made... We could run with that. <laughs> OK. You've made a whole lot of YouTube videos. In fact, we a have. whole series. How we many have. episodes? Uh, I think we're up to about 94 or something Good at the minute. Good heavens. I yeah, never so. thought there was that much information about... Yeah, well, you'd be bees. surprised. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, uh. Well, we're about to and find out. It's all going to happen. They're going to be bee jokes. There's bee jokes coming all on through right. this episode. Uh, but, but let's go back to the beginning for you, because you didn't start being a bee man. No, I didn't. I started off as an orchardist. I grew up in Wollonga. It's a little town just down the road here. here we South grew Australia. almonds yep. in South Australia. And then Known for roses and yep. almonds. Almonds, exactly right. And now vines. Now they grow some yes. nice wine down there. So. Yes, they do. Yeah, Southern yeah. Vale wineries. So yes. what made you change from uh, well, I almond moved, growing well, to Well, I'm bees. actually still almond growing. You are? Just, yep. So I've moved to the Riverland to grow almonds and just just almonds need bees. And I had, lot, you actually hire bees to come on the almond orchards. Right. And um, they left some behind and then I Decided started playing with them and then I got a bit more and... Yeah, just fell in love with the little critters, really. Is that and, right? Yeah, because they're fascinating little creatures. I uh, believe so. But that's an interesting thing you said. You hire in bees, so mm -hmm. you obviously yeah. hire in hives. Yes. So who had the hives to start with? Uh, other beekeepers. Right. <laughs> other apiarists. Uh, yeah, so you just... Um, they. When I was a kid, though... They actually used to give us honey to turn up. We didn't have to pay them. Now it's sort of gone around to the next cycle and you've got to pay them to come. So that's a bit of a bit interesting. Well, yeah, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. But, that but, a... but going from being a primary producer, basically, I suppose it's really a secondary producer in a way because the bees are the primary producer. Pretty much, when you think yes. about it. Yes, you just got to... And the thing with bees is you've got to work with them. You just... They are actually in charge of their own destiny. You get a little bit of whatever they... If they get carried away, they get a good honey flow, you can have some extra... But you can't just, you know, decide to take all their food, otherwise they'll starve to death and then you've got, then you've got nobody. Now that's a very valid point because it's something we forget, that the honey is not a by-product of something, it is their food, that it, we yes. steal their food. Well, yes, but, if you, but that, that's what some um, of my vegan friends would tell you, that we steal their food. Oh. But technically, if you're farming the hive, you actually need to remove some honey, otherwise they run out of places to put it. And then they get distressed because they've got nowhere to put their stores and then they'll make a new swarm and they'll go off and find some other hole to be in. And well, we often find yeah, them. Yeah, but yes. pictures that I've seen of when they are taking the honey away, it's like there is so much there. Yes. How then um, you would have to take some to make mm. room for them to make more. Yes. Otherwise it's overflowing Ex of honey. Exactly mm. right, yes. So we're actually doing them a favour in a way. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, and, and let's, then... let's have a look at some of this because I think... Um, when you see what you've just been talking about and you actually oh. pull the, the... The frames out. The frames yep. out. Here's some of your YouTube clip. So here's some nice fresh seasoned honey. I'm going to leave her out. The girls have got it stuck in there a bit. Heck, they're getting excited now. Um, look at that. You can see it's nice and ripe because I've capped it all off. But it's not overcooked. So that's going to be gorgeous. So you want this, see this is all nicely capped now, but it's not over thick because I'll keep putting more and more wax on it. But I haven't got one in here, but you can see when, when they haven't got that coating on, but the honey's in there, it hasn't actually been finished. So it's still a bit liquidy. So you've got to wait for them to finish actually capping it off. And then the, they, then the honey's right, ready for going. So the moisture content should be okay under your 18. Shall we do a look at that one? That's an older one, but that's pretty 
good. I reckon we'll steal that one off him as well. So these frames were brought down here the other, probably a fortnight ago. They're nearly full. So that's pretty good. There's just a little bit of unripened honey through the bottom here. So we'll leave them with them for a little while. We'll tidy them, tidy them up a bit. So Mark, that's amazing seeing all this stuff and you're obviously just sort of doing this on the run. But yeah. first of all, why and how? As in for YouTube or for beekeeping yeah, in general? Why, <laughs> why YouTube? Why YouTube? Well mainly, well, mainly because my son's a very talented camera operator for that's a start. How. That's, how, that's the how part. Yes. The why part is because I think as your intro said, most people think about honey and bee stings when they think of bees. They don't actually think about the fact that they're actually producing the food that we eat. Mm. They are very vital for, especially for almonds, peaches, yeah. um, apricots. Well, they've, 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 they've do all the that. pollinating yeah. and avocados. If you like avocados, mm -hmm. they do them, and all the, and lots. So probably a good thirty percent of our food is relying on bees to pollinate them. And so I just thought it would be good to educate people about what importance they are. Because there wasn't much out there. Was that why? Well, not not. Not engaging it, not yeah, engaging stuff. Not with somebody stuff. just being natural and chatting about it. Really. Yeah, yeah. You've got a lovely sort of feel. I've looked, I've looked at a lot of them, but there's too many to look at <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, in that's one fair sitting. Enough. Yes. <laughs> but um, this is the address. This is the YouTube address to go to. We're yep. putting that on the screen for you so that um, people will have a look and be able to see the judge for themselves. Well, there's just so much of it. <laughs> yes. I, yeah. I mean, so how long have you been doing, going from um, almond growing to beekeeping? How long have you been doing the beekeeping? Uh, about f probably five years, but yeah, really the last, I mean, we've just been filming the last year. So yeah, okay. Yeah, I've done, but I'm still having a few moments, as you would see, if you watch the clips. Do you, do you <laughs> get Well, we had to clean no, up just... some of your language. Yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> well, that's, that's a country problem. Oh, uh, well. But have, do you get stung at all? I mean, yeah, I know yeah, you can see from that clip that you've got all yeah. the stuff on to protect yourself. But, no, but in other clips. But Janice, the hands are amongst the bees. Yeah, oh. yeah. But but mm. then that's when they're friendly. But they'll still bite you through your suit. Do they? Yeah. But they don't yeah. bite. Do or they? sting. Sting you through your suit, well, yes. Yes. <laughs> Mind now, you, they have got teeth and they, they do bite the ants, so that's another interesting thing. See? Yeah. So they'll, so they'll much actually to learn in so yeah. little time. <laughs> You'll have you see the ants and the bees having a little bit of a fight. And some of the really cool footage that I, we didn't get to capture was they'll pick up a bull ant and they'll fly off with him in their mouth and then they'll drop him out away from their hive and so of course I'm yes. not sure whether the ant can fly but I'll just no. see what happens. Oh, but is it like a clean getting rid yeah, of them? Yeah, just, just pick them up and, and tie, yeah, carry them off. Right? They're wow. pretty fascinating that part. Like but the, ant, the, but ant the whole world. story of bees is fascinating because they think as one. They do, yes. They're, and they're a box of girls. What's more? What do you mean by that? They're all girls. They're, girls. they're, girls. they're all girls. Just a box of girls. A pretty much. A whole big box of girls. And there's, although there's a few boys, obviously, because they have to do their part. Well, the boys, boys do. do. But they don't do a whole lot more. <laughs> they don't. The they boys sit around. are very busy then, I suppose. No, not really, because the... No, anyway, they don't know. <laughs> how, how, is this, what, is this P rate, G rated, isn't no, it? So it is. There. We won't go there. But it's, no, you know, but we need to understand that these things happen. It <laughs> yes, doesn't matter do. who's watching yes. and at what time of the day or night. Yeah. There is fertilisation that needs to yep. occur with mm -hmm. the queen bee. Yes. And there Only are drone once. bee, one bee, yes. yes. No. And there are drone bees that do that and yep. everybody else is a worker. Is that yep. right? That's how it works, yeah. See, yep. I did the research. Yep, yep. They, they, raise, they raise the boys, which are called drones, and then they go out to a drone mating site and they just hang out there with their mates until a hot looking queen flies past and then they all chase all right. her down and Hello. Yeah, and give her a bit of a serve. The sad part about it is the <laughs> poor old male boy, he only gets one crack at him and then he splits in half and he's done. So uh, Yes. So it's oh, a, that's a bit rough, isn't it? <laughs> terrible. Yeah, his head went, it's, what, was that, what was that kid show where the head went that way and the legs went that way? Oh, that was an what ad. What was that ad? Yes. I, I can't yes, remember that I little kid. Remember. Anyway, that's a bit yeah, what happens to the poor old drone. He's in... So, anyway, again, <laughs> but these things in life are interesting to understand yeah. because without that, fruit wouldn't happen, as we mm -hmm. just said, and yep. we wouldn't have honey. We wouldn't. And up until, uh, I think it was oh. the Middle Ages, wasn't it? Only honey, honey was the only sweetener. So yes. honey was used yes. for virtually everything. Mm -hmm. Sugar cane hadn't sort of been capitalised yeah, on. Yeah. No, they really didn't really have it. They didn't even know what it was, for, well, really, in the, in the Western world anyway. Mm. 
Well, and it goes back to Egypt. They were keeping bees in Egypt. Yes. Which is pretty good. Yes. Wow. In Gosh. fact, you can see that on some of the hieroglyphs, uh, bees are literally mm. bees. Yep. So they, were, uh, they knew how important they were to agriculture yeah. then no, as well. Definitely. Yep. Uh, so j mm. just getting back, so do you and your son just think, right, today we're going to go out and we're going to shoot this? Is that uh, well, generally what happens is he comes and it's what's actually happening with the bees. At but, that time of At that year. particular time, yeah. Uh -huh. but, but right. So it's just seasonal. And Although sometimes we get a phone call and I'll go and rescue some from a house or pick a swarm up here. Or, well, that's something so, I'd like to talk to you about in a minute because yeah. this happens to everybody at some time. Mm -hmm. You see a swarm of bees in a gum tree or under the eaves of your house. Yep. What do we really do about that? And that another happens. question I really want to ask you yes. yep. is when, do, when will you give up smoking? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, actually, technically, are we talking about the smoky smoking? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm not going to give that up because that sort of calms the girls down with a bit of smoke on them. Interesting that you would mention that as a sort of thinking that sort of smoking because back in the day, they used to use tobacco leaves in the smokers. Oh, did they? Yeah, so Mr Langsworth, when you read his book, he used to say it was a very bad idea because it gave the girls a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's so much more of an yes. interesting conversation coming up in a minute. It'd be funny if there was a commercial for... Smoking? Smoking. No. <laughs> and they're funny. out there now. Mark, who the, is the Bush Bee Man? Mm, yeah, thank you very yeah. Thanks for having me, Bee Bush Man. <laughs> yeah. are you? Well, I think I'm the Bee Bush Man. Bush Bee Man. My lad wanted to call me the. What did you want to call me? He wanted to call me um, ah, something American. Dad? No, well, he called. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the dad jokes that come up. <laughs> uh, anyway, he wanted to call me the. What was that stupid name you had? It doesn't matter. I digress. Anyway, we'll moving right along. We'll find <laughs> out. We'll find out. <laughs> yes, we will. We'll find out. He'll come in and give us a chance yes. as to what his name was. But <laughs> <laughs> now, the nice thing in in your the clips that you're making, the little shows that you're making, they're all about five, six minutes, four, five, six. Well, they minutes. they vary. Sometimes actually they're blowing out a bit now because the people oh, are wanting been. them to be longer, so they've ended up being like fourteen minutes. Some of them. Okay. We put one up the other week that was only four minutes, and then people freaked out. They went, "Oh my goodness, that was so quick." Too quick. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted more. Well, see, I. <laughs> enjoyed watching things like making the stand for a beehive out of bits yeah. and pieces, pallets and stuff that you'd find yeah. around. Yeah. You know, because people don't sort of think about those things and yeah. the fact that you needed to place it in the right place. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Recently we had on the program um, a lady from, a, a professor from the Adelaide Uni who was doing bee mm. hotels oh, yes. through the city using naked, uh, naked, native <laughs> bees. Native bees, yes. Native bees. That's yes. right, and in bamboo, mm -hmm. she yes. was yep. building houses, like, yeah. really for, well, yeah. Because, houses, be hives. Yeah, 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 because they don't, live. They yeah. don't mm -hmm. do the same as Your the honey bees. bees that we have here. Yep. So all of these bees that you have mm -hmm. Yep. were imported. Well, their yes. great, 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 greats they were, were they imported. Were, that's a very interesting story, how they imported them too. Because mm. if you read the history about how... Can you imagine, back in the day, we were on a sailing boat. Yes. It was a fair way from England to Australia in a sailing boat. Yes, and was. they tried several times to get the bees here, and most of them died on the way. Cause they, so they ended up in wine kegs covered with ice and cold, so then they thought that they were hibernating. So they hibernated oh, the bees okay. all the way from England to Australia... Good and they, heavens. Yep, and the first 18 hives, I think it was, that came here. And then next thing you know, they was like everywhere because they just got out in our forest and went, this is like paradise. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's a good question, <laughs> right. though. That was that a good thing? Because yeah. obviously there would have been competition between them and the native bees. Yeah, well, maybe. But then, then it's, I don't think there was a shortage of nectar. I don't think, well, that's an interesting argument. You could have that argument. There is that, there is a well, bit of that. Well, let's have the argument now. There, there is a bit of that argument going on in the national forests about whether bees are a problem as far as, and some of that's an argument about um, bird nests as well, like, because the bees obviously go into the hollow logs and make a home. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and there, I guess there is, there could be an argument for that, but it's a little late now. Yes, it's well, already it's true. So I think the bolt horse has bolted there. They're probably more productive than the cane toad. We brought them here as well. Yes, well, that's, They're a damn that's a completely different. <laughs> <laughs> that's a completely different. So, <laughs> you've got the hives and you take the hives <laughs> to people that need them. Yes. Mm -hmm. got the Sorry, hives. did I wreck that? No, no, no. Not the, <laughs> got the hives. Oh, the, oh, the, hives, the hives, yeah. So you've got the hives yeah. and you take those to other farms or places, orchards and so on. Yeah, yeah. So, so how do you get the honey out? 
You oh, don't yeah. have to answer that. Yes. Because in this clip can, you already you show have. Oh, there you go. So anyway, we're going to get these little caps off here. Beautiful bit of wax capping. <laughs> this is not ideal, this knife. I don't know. I might get a different thing. I might get the roller because this doesn't really work as good as it should, you wouldn't think. It works good there where it's risen. Where it's a bit risen up, it's good. But didn't know when it popped in a bit, it's a bit hard to get it. And then you end up digging a great bloody hole in it. So that's a bit crap. <laughs> yummy, is not it? Look at that. Fresh. Beautiful fresh buzz, you honey. And that's it. I think it's only six frames. So if anybody actually decides to count, we record out. Now you don't want to start it off too fast or she'll start popping. Of course, the extraction process can take a different amount of time for a different amount of frames. This is fairly fresh honey, so it shouldn't take too long. I would say probably three, four minutes on each side once it gets up to speed. And of course, I might go and get myself a bucket of water because this is going to have crap everywhere. Looking pretty good. That's one side off. Most and some, and so if you have got to spin it around with this model, but she's a bit, she's not the flashiest one. So, you see, she's very new foundation, so she's getting a bit of a whip up. That's running out nice. Anyway, we're living and learning. <laughs> Well, there you go, cool. And that's what we'd call a sticky, which is basically the extracted honeycomb. So we can pop that back in the hive when the girls need some more, and I've got some to build from. And I'll reuse that during the honey season, and then after that, I'll clean them up and only use the ones that are in the hive. So that was interesting to hear that the the um, what do you call the hive? The, the, the wax. The wax. Mm -hmm. Yes, but what do you call it in the shape? The honeycomb? The honeycomb, thank you. <laughs> Seniors moment, seniors moment. <laughs> I need more honey to keep the brain working. <laughs> so the honeycomb that really you don't need anymore and neither do they. Mm -hmm. Yep, my, my lovely wife is making lip balms and body body creams oh. out of it. And it's a mixture of the, the actual, some of the wax and some honey. Oh, that and smells nice. Yeah. That. Smells nice. And not, <laughs> you got your nose in right it. in the kisser. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing I like it, I mean, I'm not really a lip balm sort of oh, dude come on. myself, but I use this one because it's actually, um, Do it, it doesn't make it glossy, it just sort of soaks into your lips. Yes, and, but I'd be eating it off all the time. Well, you could, yeah, like yeah. Mm, I like yeah, it. That's nice. mm. oh. And it's all natural, so that's good. Oh, so, very yeah. good. And natural is good because honey, doesn't have a honey have its own sort of healing properties as well? It does, it does actually. It's, um, some of it's used for medical purposes as well. It's really good for burns apparently. Like okay. when the Manuka honey is, is the, the one that everybody thinks of. Yeah. But if you can get even just natural... But that's more from New Zealand, isn't it? It is New Zealand or a bit up in New South Wales. Right. But, but if you get pure natural honey, it's got its em healing enzymes in it. And if you put it on a burn and you actually rub it on your skin, on the burn obviously, put it on there and then you put the bandage on that. And as the honey dissolves, it forms a little bit of a layer of liquid, so when you take the bandage off, you don't pull the fresh healed skin off. Oh. And so then well, the burns. Well, I never knew that. And no. so then the burns will heal quicker. But it's a very old remedy. But whether the whether the hospital will allow that to happen <laughs> is another question. But, but it works quite well. <laughs> but here's an never. interesting thing, because I was brought up in the Adelaide Hills in the bush, yes. so to speak. As, as it kid. would have been back then. It was <laughs> in the scrub, and yeah. we had all the bees making honey from mm -hmm. all yep. sorts of trees. There was yes. The, the gum trees when they flowered mm -hmm. and the bottle, uh, not bottle brush, oh, bottle brush, yes, yeah. but... Oh, Salvation Jane, Jane probably. Yeah, we didn't have that, day. but we had something else that'll come to me in a minute. Yeah. Um, and my dad was very conscious of, of making sure that there was enough flowers around to keep the bees. He was yes. a great believer in honey and used to have honey every day because mm -hmm. he felt he lived till he was 94 and he was healthy right up until then. Well, that's, so that's not a bad innings, is it? Oh, yeah. not <laughs> and he used to do probably what many people do with you. Mm -hmm. He knew a beekeeper and he yep. would get the fresh honey that yep. he used oh. to love seeing it come out the big 
tank mm -hmm. and yep. turn on the tap and wait for the honey to drizzle out. Yes, yep, yep. Um, beautiful. Mm. We just have sort of forgotten how important a natural product like this is. Absolutely, we have. We've missed the memo, but we could we could go on to the whole saga with the Capolino boys at the minute, but we shouldn't. Okay. <laughs> boys. You know, with the big honey producers that yes, were putting yes. the um, oh, making the pretend honey with pretend it. Pretend honey, Because yeah. actually, interesting with that is the poor bloomin' honey has been very demonised because it's even got in trouble with the schools now because they've put so much sugar water in the stuff that's pretend honey. Because oh, okay. real honey is, is a natural product and, and it's natural yes. enzymes. Oh. Yes. And it hasn't got any of that cane sugar or any of that in it. So. And the important thing is it really does come fresh from the tree, the bush, the flower, doesn't it? Yes, it comes from the nectar that's on the, on the oh. little flower. Oh. I think, they, I think what they, well, I've read somewhere that they've got to fly 500 kilometres for a teaspoon of honey. It's amazing, Something isn't it? Something ridiculous like that. I've got, <laughs> well, I've got some cherry trees in my back garden and I'm waiting for one to flower because the other one I've got isn't a, a self-pollinator. Oh, so I'm waiting yes. for the other one to flower so the yep. bees can cross over. And I was out in the garden the other day, bees buzzing around the place. I thought that was fantastic. Yes. Yep. And, and I was recently in, in England mm -hmm. and the bees over there seem to be almost twice as big mm. as they were flying around oh, okay. uh, quite a few of the flowers in my friend's garden I was staying oh, with. Right. And I thought, uh, because they're really honeybees with the stripy bottoms. Oh, okay, and yeah, yeah. But that's, that's not what we have here, not that no, particular. The bumblebee. No. Yeah, 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 more than a bumblebee. Could have been a bumblebee. Yeah, a bumblebee. Yeah, bumblebee. bumblebee. Yeah. Is that what they are? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was right. really interesting to watch them because they laboured literally from sun up till sunset, mm. then they all disappeared. Yep. Where did they go? They went back home. And they chilled out in their little lounge room and they watched you. No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, they might have. But they would Maybe have been, not. Well, they might have from outside. <laughs> so they would have gone back to a hive somewhere. Yes, generally speaking. So yep, would it have the... been a set up hive for them or would it have been a hollow tree? You weren't there, I know, you don't I, know. But no. It would be either. Bees... But either way, the interesting thing is, as beekeepers, we're just mimicking nature, really. All we're doing is creating a situation where we can actually help harvest the honey. But mm. we're not doing anything that different. Because if it's in the hollow of the tree, you can't get to it. So no, exactly. Tell me then, one day when I went home and went to go in my back door, yep. I had a hive of bees. A swarm the, of bees, a probably. Swarm, sorry, mm -hmm. a swarm of yep. bees. Um, how, why would they have chosen my door? Um, obviously, I, I had to come and get somebody to come and take them away. Because you're yeah, so but sweet. <laughs> suddenly, to get yep. home and... Well, normally it would have been probably this time of year or a bit, a bit later in, mm. in the spring. It's generally when it happens. Because what, what the bee's instinct is... Yeah, once hang on. Just hold that thought. Because we've got to go for a break. Yep. And we'll come back in a tick and hear what the bee instinct is. OK. We're here with the bee bushman. Yeah. <laughs> He's still here. I'm still here. Say That's that really it. quick. Yeah. Hey, so the answer to Janice's question was, why did the bees swarm? pick that spot? Yeah. Yeah. To well, because well, when they when they want to make a swarm, it's basically because that's their way of multiplying and creating another another colony. So they would have swarmed and they would have had their queen with them, mm. and more than likely their little scout bees hadn't found a home for them, and so they just ran out of energy. And it was probably getting towards evening, and they thought, well, this looks like a nice sheltered spot. It's a nice house. And we'll house. just camp here for a minute. It's a nice house. Yeah. And Your then son has been quietly filming <laughs> over there. Come in, come in and join us. He's been quietly filming us, yeah. filming you. <laughs> yes, um, as he does. <laughs> and what's his name? Introduce. This is him. young John. He's the he's the he's the talent, really. He's the bloke that makes me look did half Did you reasonable. come up with the idea or did he? Oh, well, uh, the story goes, Dad was watching a lot of bee videos and there wasn't a lot of, like, really engaging bee videos. So Dad, being engaging, talented kind of guy when it comes to talking. Talking. Yeah. So it was like, well, it's a natural fit. So we, I got him on camera and I've always wanted to do something with him. But this, I kind of felt like it was something he's going to have to stick with, so that was why we went with this. Yeah. But you're also a cameraman at another TV station. Yes, yes. I am. Um, no, that's my production as far as it needs to yeah, go. Yeah. Just yeah. a cameraman yeah. at another yes. TV station. Yes, uh, <laughs> talented. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon the clincher was when we made the few promo videos and everybody was rolling around the la lounge room laughing so much. We thought, well, I think we might be onto something, something here. Something yeah. <laughs> And nearly so 100 episodes it. later. Yeah. Well, so once again, here's the address that you need to go to. But yeah. if you just go to YouTube and put in. 
the Bush Bee Man, yep. you'll see all of those episodes I'll come up. Pop up. And they really are worthwhile watching. Yep. I'd personally recommend it had he bribed me with honey. So <laughs> I would definitely say I yep. personally recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely yep. fantastic. No. What a great story. Thanks yeah. for being so committed to what much. you're both no, doing. It's good. Well done. Thanks so, for having us. Until next time on Our Time, Janice, it's time to say... Goodbye. Keep yourself nice till next time we meet. Bye. And they spin a cartoon and turn into a bee, from a little worm to a bee, same as from a caterpillar to a moth. So the insect world's pretty cool. Just the upside to bees is we get honey from them, hey? Yum yum. <laughs>